Women Frame. Um, today we're going to do a little bit of a review on just how to do our fashion sketches. Um, step by step and of course you should be very familiar with creating fashion sketches from uh, the introductory course to this course, of course Fashion Sketching 1. Um, but of course, you know, we have the summer off or whenever you took it, we're going to just review um, how to create it and I'm going to show you sort of the way I like to do it. Um, so hopefully that will help you um, maybe give you some tips on how to do your fashion sketches as well. Now, of course, this is just what works for me. Um, you're going to develop your own technique and your own methods and your own steps on how to do your uh, fashion sketching. But what I like to do, since of course, uh, what we like to do is not only to do good fashion sketches, but to do them quickly. Um, I've sort of developed a technique uh, over the years that uh, follows very closely to how comic books are actually created. Um, and if you take a look at you know, how comic books are created, because there are many, many pictures, many full color pictures that are created very quickly. Um, and they're broken up into different steps. One person will pencil it out, uh, another person will color it in, and then again, we'll do all the inking and the details, uh, final details last. And that's kind of the steps that I like to go through. Um, I find it very quick, very easy. Um, and again, we like to try to streamline this process uh, without eliminating quality. Uh, but of course, by uh, streamlining it, we make it a little bit quicker, a little bit faster. So where I'm gonna start is I'm going to start with um, my paper. Now, the paper that I like to use for my finished sketches is this type of paper, and it is a Bristol board. Um, the Bristol board here, as you can see, has sort of an old pad. Um, it's a little bit thicker than your typical sketch paper, but it's not as sort of puffy and fluffy as a watercolor paper. And um, as I sort of mentioned in the introductory video, um, I like to mix a lot of media when I do my fashion sketches. So I might have a picture that is ink, pencil, uh, marker, and paint. And your Bristol board is thick enough to be able to handle those paints without buckling too bad, um, so long as you don't keep them super, super watery. Um, and it has a little bit of texture for our pencil, but not too much still perfectly fine uh, for colored pencils. So it's sort of your all around utilitarian, um, nice thick stock, uh, good paper. So doing your finished sketches, um, your nice final designs, I like to use this. Of course, when you're doing maybe your thumbnails or just rough sketches or practice sketches, it is a little bit more expensive because of the thicker stock. So your normal regular sketchbook paper is perfectly fine for any sort of preliminary sketching or not finished or you know nothing that's gonna be your final artwork. Now, um, the one issue with your Bristol board is it's rather thick. So you might wonder why I'm standing by this window and I have a uh, croaky up here on the window. Well, to eliminate the uh, problem with not being able to see through your Bristol board, I go ahead and take whatever I want to trace this, um, uh, not ex exactly trace, but need to see through my croaky onto the window, and I can put the thicker stock paper on top of it, and the light that shines through the window uh, allows it to become see-through. And this can work really well for anything that you want to trace. It's basically simulating what is called a light box. Um, and a light box is uh, pretty much uh, exactly how it sounds. It's a box that you would place multiple layers of paper or whatever it is um, on top of it and it has a light that shines through it, creating even really thick stock paper uh, to become transparent and be able to sort of see through it. Now you might not be able to see uh, the croaky here, but I can see it pretty well um, as the light is shining through. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here with my croaky, and I have a sketch right here that I'm going to basically copy. Um, I'm going to take this outfit and put it on the croaky here. Um, and this is basically what you're going to do for your first assignment, the um, full color sketch from reference. Now you don't have to have a magazine sketch like this might be a lot easier for you to go ahead and just pull one off the internet, don't care what you use, but what you're going to do is you're just going to take what this outfit, this nice full color outfit, and we're going to draw it on a croquis. 
Um, and please be sure to send me your reference photo along with your finished sketch when you are ready. Uh, full de details on this first assignment. Uh, look uh, in the content section on Blackboard for assignment number one, uh, full colored sketch from reference. So what I'm going to do is maybe I'll take this up right beside me so I don't have to hold it and I can kind of look at it uh, as I go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and very, very lightly in pencil do a general rough sketch. Now I'm not going to get into the details and I'm going to use a very, very light pencil. So I'm using a 6H here. Now you can use a lighter or a heavier brand all the way down to sort of HB and stuff like that. Just make sure that you use a very light hand. Now I'm going to keep this light because of course pencil is not going to be my finished medium. It's going to be color um, and, and ink and things like that. So I just want to do a general sort of outline of what I'm doing so I know I'll uh, have a little bit of reference for when I do my color blocking. So again, this is going to be quick. It's going to be super, super light because a lot of this, again, I'm going to erase away. And you do want to be very careful with using too much graphite or using really heavy graphite, especially when um, using light colors. Um, if you do tend to be a little bit heavier handed or um, use a darker or heavier uh, graphite pencil down into like maybe the B's, if that's what you have, uh, erase it away very carefully before you start. Now this is because graphite has a really um, nasty tendency to mix with your light colors. So we have a lot of light colors in here. I have white, I have light skin tone, I have these light colors here. I don't want my graphite to bleed into those colors, which can make them muddy. So that's why I'm keeping this light and I'm keeping it very, very quick light. Um, and again, you might not even be able to see from all the way over there um, uh, my sketch, but I'll, I'll close up uh, when I'm finished. And what I'm also going to do is I am not going to outline the body of the croaky. Now that's kind of a waste of time, right? Because she's wearing clothes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch the outfit on her and any sort of bare parts, I'll of course sort of outline the body, but I'm not going to outline the entire body first. I don't need to because I can already see it because it is uh, beneath my sketch. It just takes extra time and it adds extra graphite on the thing. So I'm gonna go right into it and sketch. Now also remember uh, that when we use our croaky to don't skimp on the volume of your clothing. A lot of uh, beginner sketch artists or beginning fashion uh, sketchers tend to really hug super close to those lines of the croaky. Now this is a very um, voluminous outfit. So right here you can see it puffs out a lot. So I'm going to uh, exaggerate that even. So I, a lot of times I say exaggerate the shape, but since we kind of tend to be conservative with shapes and hug the croaky body, um, those exaggerations tend to be closer to the actual garment anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and just start sketching really quickly um, uh, what our outfit will look like. So those big round shoulders. Again, I'm, I'm looking at those details, but I'm not going to include everything, especially internal details, because those will be added later. And again, only kind of be erased and covered up in the color blocking section. Now I'm also taking a look at my croquis a little bit different than my uh, sketch here because um, if I peel this back up and take a look, my croquis is putting a little bit more weight on this leg. She is very evenly stanced. So in this instance, the hips are tilted a little bit more like this. 
as the, the hip angle always tilts upwards toward the weighted leg. Here it is very even as the um, legs hold even weight. So I'm gonna make sure that that gets replicated in my sketch and I'm gonna angle that skirt up to one side. Along with the hem, what happens with the waist of the skirt will happen with the hem. We have a little bit of a wrinkle in here. Maybe another one here that actually has the leg. And I have to change the feet a little bit because these are mostly flat and she's sort of geared up for my heels. But that's okay. want to do too much more or um, you know spend too much time on this because again this is really just to get the basic outline and the basic structure so what I want to do is let me just um, bring you up a little closer so you can see as you can see it's very light very very light I don't have all the details just the basic outline and basic structure and now that I have that basic sort of pencil outline, I'm ready to go ahead and uh, bring this to my desk and finish it. So I'll pick up with you there. Okay, so here we are. I have my setup. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to sit in my chair, which I've tried to carefully place out of frame, but Makes me a little off to the side. And so I have it here and you know what I'm gonna do, especially if I have a, a darker pencil, I'm gonna go ahead and just erase some of my pencil line. Again, till I can just barely see what I've done. And especially in the parts that are gonna be quite light and I don't want that graphite to mix in with my light colors. So I'm just gonna erase it away. And again, if you have a heavier hand or are working with a darker colored pencil or are working with very light colors, this is gonna be an important step. Or else, of course, that graphite tends to mix in and muddy your colors, which we don't want. So just very lightly erase, not totally, but just so I'm just barely getting a very, very light um, sort of pencil line. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start color blocking in and I'll start with that very colorful shirt. Now another sort of thing that I like to do, and I'll do it over here right now, um, but 
uh, of course, you'd want to do it on a separate piece of paper when you are working with, um, you know, a finished thing where you don't want to muck, muddy up or muck up uh, your page. It's very important to test your colors, especially if you're going to be blending colors or overlapping it or just to test out your textures or whatever you're going to do. I like to have a little bit of a test sheet of paper. So over on the side here, I'm just going to sort of test out that color. So, you know, that looks good for that sort of pink. And I have sort of this green, all right, that's very close. And you know, so on and so forth, because of course you never wanna test out your colors on the final um, uh, sketch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, and these are very sort of abstract shapes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and in this sort of shirt area, I'm gonna go in and just sort of put in some shapes that are gonna be similar to what I see in the shirt. We'll put in some green, and we even have some white up here, so I'll make sure to leave in some page white to represent that. So now I'll move on to the next color. A little bit of pink. And I'm just trying to sort of spread it around. Trying to get just generally the shapes that I see. So what else do we have? We've got some orange. Some of these colors touch, some of them don't. Some of them kind of blend into one another, especially the oranges blending into sort of a more yellowy color. So I'll make note of that. And I'm not forgetting about the edges. I wanna do it all the way up to my edges. here. Now there's a little bit of yellow so it sort of bleeds here so I'm going to kind of have this yellow. Now you see I'm sort of already mixing. I'm mixing um, marker, different types of marker, now colored pencil and of course that's you know whatever works for your colors. I like this yellow it matched a little bit closer than my yellow marker so I'm just going to Looks like all the oranges kind of bleed into a little yellow. So I'm going to just do that. Going over a little bit of the yellow portion to sort of blend it in. And what else do we have? We have some blue. color as there is there so now let's work on the black portions I'm 
much I still while I can. I see she's got some orange buttons in there. So um, just go ahead and put in some orange buttons. There's one, two, three. So I'll put in one, two, three. And again, I'm gonna leave a little bit of white, but for the most part, I'm gonna just sort of fill it in. like this always take a little bit longer to render because of the fine detail but just bear with me or speed ahead if you like <laughs> now sometimes there's little black sort of splotches in the color so I'm just going to kind of put those in here and there as well again they're very broken up colors so I want to keep that in mind as well. I'm going to leave a little bit more white here and there. see kicking on but you don't want that background noise There's a lot of white here up in the shoulder, so I'm going to leave a lot of it kind of just blank. Okay. Maybe a little bit here because it kind of bees open, so we can finish that and all the little details and less. Okay. So there I have the shirt, and again, this is color blocking, so it's not completely finished. I'm going to go in and put a little bit more detail in it, um, uh, make those buttons stand out, and maybe put the little pearls in later. Um, but I'm going to move on. Um, now I'm going to do the skin tone. So we have belly belly. And even 
you can kind of make mistakes. I think I did the drew the waist of the skirt a little low. So I'm going to raise it up a little bit so you can start to sort of catch your mistakes as they go. Just a little bit of the hand peeking out there. A little bit more over here. And the rest is behind her, which if you don't like drawing hands is a great place to put them. <laughs> I want to leave the eyes white, lips too if you want to do a light color, so it will be more realistic when I draw those whites of those eyes, it'll just be a little bit easier. pearl start okay now um what I'm actually going to do is I know that the skirt is white but I'm going to make it a color um because I want to show you a lot, a lot of times I get questions how do you do details um on top of a dark color because usually we will just take a black pen and sort of outline for our details but of course black does not show up on dark colors whether it be black or any of sort of other dark colors so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the skirt sort of a dark turquoisey color. Um, and I can show you then what to use to create details on top of that dark color. So let's go ahead and just put in a nice, I like this color anyways, I think it looks a little bit better than the white. It's more colorful. And let's just pull it down. Now, you see I get like a little bit of streaks, which is very common with markers. We get those streaks, but don't worry. There's a couple things you can do. One, you can sort of use them to help create shadow. But if you're not comfortable with that, just go ahead and go over it again. might be a little darker than you want, but things tend to dry a little bit lighter than they are wet with markers. And you'll see I'm getting a much less streaky color just by going it over it a, a few times. And these chart pack markers do tend to streak quite a bit, so it's very necessary. And if it does, you know what to do. Now you can see it's less straight across than it is in the picture. And again, that is because the croquis has our hips angled this way. So both the um, waist and the hem I've angled to align with her hip line. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and start on the details and for the most of it uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a uh, fine point pen and try to what looks good do I have on hand here a zero eight it's going to be pretty good I'm going to use something finer for the face, now the black does show up here pretty well, but I'll show you, should have probably used a slightly darker color to illustrate this, but I thought it went nicely. Okay. 
really has sort of a do -do -do -do. squarish pattern. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. Didn't do the heels yet, but uh, maybe I'll just leave them white. See, so I'm doing these little C's to do the toes. We'll go into more sort of little secrets and tips for shoes and little things like that. when we do a section on shoes. This one's turned out a little bit, so I'm gonna see a little bit more of this strap. And the shape of the heel is gonna be a little bit different. Come around there like that. Okay. I'm gonna cut it off. I don't see all that. You see, I have a little bit of a bleeding line here. My colors are bleeding. So you can try to avoid that by putting a slightly thicker outline line where you need it. And also leaving a little bit of space between your colors. So be careful. All right. So um, let's see, I'm gonna switch to a slightly finer, actually much finer. Um, this is now a 005, and I like to use really fine uh, pens for the facial details. It also kind of tends to look a little bit clunky. Just a hint of lash. That's all we need. A little bit straighter across eyebrows, but that doesn't need to look like the person. And when I do croaky pupils, I kind of just like to dot them in so it leaves a little bit of white and kind of looks a little bit more starry eyed. And you'll also notice that I'm not a big fan of noses. And I'll usually just abbreviate them with a little line. All you need. I do like a nice little neck muscle, maybe a hint of clavicle. Okay. Now, um, just give her some lipstick, I guess. And hair color, uh, we got black hair and I got black markers, so let's go with that. Now remember, um, when you're doing hair, uh, don't, you know, concentrate on every individual hair. It's, you know, uh, it doesn't end up looking so nice. Um, you really want to um, focus more on the shape of the hair. I might do a little bit of this just to show a shine coming down, but not a lot. Other than that, I'm just going to fill it in. If you want to fill it in nice and solid, don't even worry about a shine, don't have to. And I'll just do a little bit to show a little bit of a shine right here. Because again, uh, we'll talk about shadow a little bit more when I get to it. But a little bit coming here. So maybe I'll add a little bit more shine just to show you that that is hair coming down there. I'm not going to do any shine on this side because it'll be the side facing away from the light. But just a little bit of hair coming here. So I'm going to really put a little shine right there. It's coming over the shoulder. Right there. OK, 
Okay, there we go. She's got hair. Let's accessorize her and continue with our details. Um, now, uh, I'm going to switch back to that very fine point. She's got these little pearls that sort of wrap around. And um, I don't want to spend all day rendering them. So let's kind of just sort of get the gist of it. And I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of circles right in here. Now, you'll notice that she has a strand of pearls coming down around here, and I did not leave white for them. Again, this is going to go along. A lot of um, what gets tricky about fashion drawing is having light colors go over darker colors. I'm going to show you, um, use this opportunity to sort of show you one technique that I use. So what I have is here is just white out, and it's a pen. And hopefully I, I'll, I'll be able to do it upright. I might have to, just because of gravity's sake, do it another way. But I'm just going to dab in that pearl. And again, this is a lot easier than having to be... Ooh, I did a little bit shorter, but that's... Well, a little bit shorter is fine. Um, and again, this is going to be just a lot easier... Maybe just put some up here to dabble it. Then having to leave white spaces while I'm drawing it. Now it's a little old, so I'm getting, I might have to go over it a little bit. And of course, if you have a nice white wash, this will work really well. Or if you just have like a little, you can dab a little white out. And again, don't worry if you make it a little bit too thick or whatever, because you can always go back and refine the shape. And I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then go over it for the details. Um, but then I also want to talk about um, sort of what we're going to do down here. So right here, I have, just have a white um, colored pencil. Um, I also have a white charcoal pencil. So these are um, really great tools to go over dark colors for details. So like I said before, it's really hard to sort of show details on dark. And I might even use it up here on the, uh, the blouse because even though we have light colors, um, it might work a little bit better just to um, go ahead and use one of these as the details instead. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test to see which one works best over this color. And again, it'll work best too if you let it dry a little bit. So it doesn't take long for, you know, stuff like marker to dry, but let's pretend it's dry. So I'm just going to test to see what goes and, and shows up really well. And you can see this, you know, line shows up really well. They both, they both work pretty well, actually. Um, so it doesn't really matter what I use. Um, why don't I use a charcoal pencil? And I can go in and do my details for this skirt. Um, which would show up better than maybe black detail. So if I want to do a little bit of skirt here, a little bit of flow here, and I know it doesn't have any sort of details, but just to show you, let's, let's put pockets in. I certainly like pockets. Uh, no reason not to have this skirt have pockets. Top stitching, boop, 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 boop. And, you know, maybe a little top stitching down here just to, just to show off the fact that I can do details. Do, do, do. And again, um, you know, this is, it, it, you probably could do the same thing with a black outline, but again, if you're, this skirt was black or like really, really dark navy blue or any other really, really dark color, those black lines are not going to come up. They're not going to show up. So that's when you want to switch over to something like a white colored pencil or a white charcoal pencil. Um, and I'm probably going to do the same thing up here because we got a lot of sort of folds. It's coming and sort of pleating out from the neck. So I'm going to draw those in. Kind of have this. Um, we have those sort of folds in here. We have these big sort of puffs out here just to sort of accent them. We have this sort of a waistband thing and okay, just to put in some of those details. Not gonna go crazy with them. You never wanna go crazy with wrinkles or shadows. Um, they will come up uh, enough is, an, is, you know, just a few is enough. You don't have to go crazy doing every single little shadow, every single little wrinkle, because uh, you will go crazy. I'm just gonna try to blot this a little bit better so it'll 
get that nice white. You can see how well that white out works. And again, whenever it, it, you're trying to do a lighter color on top of a darker color, you know, white out will always work because once I put that down and it dries, I can add another color on top of that with a marker. Um, or if you're using gouache paint, as long as you don't water it down, it will show up really well. And I'll just go in and with a little bit of pencil, maybe I will, you know, define these buttons a little bit better. And maybe a little bit of the, these guys in here. And I'm only gonna kind of do, I'm not gonna do the whole round thing. So I do one side of the pearl or the bead with dark, it'll kind of look a little bit more shaded. Instead of going all the way around, we'll make it look a little bit of, a little bit flat. So I got those kind of bubbly things. Um, and again, if it is a little thing, I can just keep going over it. Um, my my whiteout pen is a little bit old, so it's a little bit watery. It's not working quite as well. Okay, last things last, let's put in some shading. Now, whenever we do shadow, I like to um, pick one simple light direction. And for me, I like to have a light direction that goes from the upper left-hand corner coming down. So this is the light that is hitting her body. Now, why do I like it? Well, picking one simple light direction is very easy. Um, then having multiple light directions, the shadows are much easier to render and understand. Also, I like to have it come here, so I do my shading on here, and that's simply because I'm right-handed. So my hand is right over here anyway. So if I were to do it over here, kind of I'm smudging it. So if you're left-handed, you might want to have your light coming from the other direction. Um, however you do it, I don't really care, so long as in the end it looks good, right? And that's all that matters. So uh, what I also like to do is work from light to dark. So this is my number one cool gray, so the lightest gray that I have. And basically the rule of thumb for shading is first, since the light is coming from this direction, what I want to do is give this side a nice shadow. So everything on this side and everything that kind of splits off is going to get some shadow. So over here, this sleeve, this arm, this part of the belly, uh, this side of the arm. So again, these are parts that split off. So I'm going to do that too. Uh, this part of the skirt, although this is getting a little bit darker, so I might need to go and switch to a darker um, marker for that because, of course, my lighter grays are not going to show up as well on darker colors. But let's see what it looks like because I can always go darker, but if it's too dark, can't fix it. Now I probably will, but anyways, let's just figure, finish it off there. And let me finish off with my light gray before I go in and do the skirt with a darker marker. So there's number one, this side is now dark. Now I have to also look at any part that sort of juts out or drops back. So places like my chin, my chin juts out over the neck. So it casts a shadow on the neck. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. Um, this shirt kind of goes a little bit over, not too much, so it's not gonna be a big shadow, but a little bit, it's gonna cast a shadow on to the belly. Now this arm goes completely behind the body so to show that, I'm just going to do the really just the whole thing or maybe just leave a little bit here um, uh, out. But same thing here. This is, you know, this kind of, uh, shirt kind of blouses out over the arm and then the arm goes behind the body. So I'm going to go ahead and put most of this in shadow. And I'll pop down here. The skirt goes blouses out quite a bit. So I'm going to do a, a, a rather large shadow here onto the leg and onto the foot right here. So this whole thing was going to be in shadow. Okay, simple, simple. Again, you don't want to do it too much. If you want to go in, if you really want to be fancy, you can do a little bit of a, a nose and eye thing. But again, you don't really have to. And maybe for the upper lip, again, super fancy, but. All right, now about there, if I wanna just sort of touch it up a little bit more, um, uh, I can see sort of, since I have a lot of um, colors kind of bleeding, I might wanna just wrap it up with a nice little outline. 
just to sort of clean it up a little bit. Doot, doot, doot. So we don't have the shirt kind of bleeding into nothing, just kind of finishes up, closes it up, makes it a little bit tighter. And I think the last thing I might want to do, let's see, and this little whiteout trick didn't work too well. I'm not getting super white little pearls, but again, I should have thought of that and gotten a new whiteout pen before, beforehand. Also, it will work a little bit better if it's flat. So let's just touch this up a little bit down here. So we are getting kind of nice white solid pearls. And imagine those were like white polka dots on a black background. You really want to go in and make sure you don't, you know, touch those little polka dots um, every little position. Also, to give this a little bit more depth, I'm going to go in and just dot it. Dot these little pearls here with a little bit of gray, just to give it a little bit of volume. And oh yeah, we got to switch to the next color brown uh, or gray, Sorry, I'm gonna, which I left on the floor, so I got to go get it. Okay, so I got a cool gray number. And again, I'm gonna work up from there. So this is number two. And don't worry if your white lines kind of come off when you put the gray in, because you can always go back and, and redo it. Yeah, that still isn't enough. So let me switch all the way to, to uh, three. And there we're starting to get a shadow. And I have, remember they sit on the insides of folds, so I'm gonna sort of put a little bit of a shadow here and you can see my white line is coming off a little bit, but no worries because I can just go over it again. Just a little bit on the edge here. And I really like these chart pack marks, markers for shadows. They tend to be kind of a little bit more bleedy and watery, which is uh, good for um, shadow. Now this is all the way to the five, just to sort of make it a little bit more noticeable. Let's just move a little bit in like that. something like that and I can just go over some of these areas that got bleeded out by the shadow marker and redo them. And there we are. So there is our uh, first drawing and um, hopefully it was helpful. Um, again, what you are gonna do with uh, your sketches and however you like to do them is perfectly fine. Uh, but hopefully this sort of showed a couple techniques to help you sort of streamline things. Um, if it was always difficult for you to sort of figure out how to, um, you know, maybe do a light color over a dark color. Hopefully, again, this was helpful. And I'll just go ahead and move this in a little bit just so you can see the finished version. Right here. And again, um, the idea is to get get the idea of the garment without um, spending a whole heck of a lot of time. Um, again, because these are really just for our reference. We're not selling these pictures. We just want to be able to um, indicate our ideas uh, good enough. So here we are. We have... Um, uh, our first sketch and again this is sort of what I'm looking for for our um, uh, first project and however you want to do it however you want to complete it is perfectly fine up to you just remember to send me that reference sketch in addition uh, all right bye guys I'll see you later uh, with our next lesson bye bye